continuing with the energy carried on a string or on a wave. Uh, here we have the energy equation that we calculated where we said the energy per unit length of the string, and of course we talk about a very small unit length is equal to this equation. Notice that's the mass per unit length, that's the, um, that's the frequency or angular frequency of the oscillation, that's the amplitude of the oscillation, and of course that's a recognizable sine function that describes the equation, but it's a sine function squared. Now let's say that we want to convert that to the energy per unit time. How much energy is being transported along the wave per unit time, which is a more useful equation. So what we're going to do now is we're going to put the dx back on the other side. So we're going to write this as dE is equal to mu omega squared a squared times the sine squared of kx minus omega t. Now we put the dx over here, so we get a dx. Now we're going to divide both sides by dt. We're going to now make it as a function of time. So dE dt, which is the amount of energy transported per unit time, is equal to mu omega squared a squared sine squared of kx minus omega t. And this will now be dx dt. Now remember, x of course is the direction in the motion of the wave, and of course the motion of the direction of the wave is the velocity. So this can be replaced by velocity. So now we can say that, and by the way, this is the power output of the wave, or the power transported. Energy per unit time is power. So we can say that the power transport on the wave is equal to d dt, which is equal to mu sub naught, and dx dt is going to be a v, right? That's the velocity. Velocity times omega squared a squared times the sine squared of kx minus omega t. Wow. So now we have the power as a function of x and t. But remember that this is still a sine function squared. So what does a sine function squared look like? Well, if this is a sine function like this, and this would be the representation of a wave, this would be, for example, the sine of kx minus omega t, and of course times some amplitude, we don't worry about that. Now let's, we, let's say we square that. What does it look like? When we square that, we get something that looks like this. So this is the sine squared of kx minus omega t. Now, what is the typical value of that? Well, it turns out that on average, over many waves, that value is equal to one half. So in other words, if I were to go ahead and find the average height of this, the average function using a, a, a calculus trick, I would find that if I calculate that, that that will always be equal to a half over enough waves like that. In other words, I can replace this by one half which means that the power transported, or the amount of energy per unit time transported by a wave, the dd, dE dt, will be equal to one half mu v omega squared a squared. And that is the useful part of the equation. This is what really helps us figure out if we have a string and there's waves on the string, how much energy is being transported on that string based upon that. Remember, this is the mass per unit length, that's the velocity, that's the angular frequency, and that's the amplitude of the wave. So, double the velocity, double the power. Double the amplitude, or quadruple the power. Double the frequency, quadruple the power. So you can see that it is indeed proportional to how massive the string is, how fast it's moving, how fast it's oscillating, and what the amplitude of the oscillations are. And in our next example, we'll actually we'll show you, with some real numbers, how to calculate the power or energy transported across a string.